Hello fellow nerds and book lovers. Welcome to Red Coley's Book Review. Uh, I'm Red Coley. I was just looking. It's been about a year since I started doing these videos. Uh, hopefully the qualities came up in the sound and in the video for this last year. I know that I've certainly learned a lot. One of the first videos that I did was to basically make my uh, top fantasy list of books to, uh, to read. And I think that it's about time that I uh, revise that and update it. So this is Rid Cooley's uh, top 10 list for 2018 of fiction books that uh, everyone really should read. Um, starting with number 10 on my list, Starship Troopers by Robert A. Heinlein. Uh, Robert A. Heinlein also had a several other extremely good uh, science fiction books. Uh, the Moon is a Harsh Mistress, Stranger in a Strange Land, a couple of the more popular ones. Starship Troopers, I, it's a political book. It has very little to do with the movie. The, the names are the same, other than that, pretty well completely different monsters. Uh, I love the book. Um, it talks about you know what patriotism is, what honor is, how a society should function. Whether you agree with him or not, he brings up some good uh, discussion points, some good thoughts. Most of the things that he talks about, I agree with. Uh, I think that they are how society should be. Uh, loved the book. Loved the armor. Loved the mech systems. Uh, loved the war. Um, really good book. Everybody really should read Starship Troopers before they die. Uh, number nine on my list is Columbus Day. This is a modern book. Uh, the author's only been writing for a few years. Uh, he does the Expeditionary Force series. Uh, his name is Craig Allenson. Uh, these books start out with just a basic uh, planetary alien invasion. And then there's a plot twist of uh, a character that I didn't see coming, uh, different actions that completely caught me off guard and they were hilarious. This is almost a comic science fiction. It's got some characters in it that you can completely get lost and forget to even think about the plot. The plot's pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm so caught up when I read this book that I forget to even look for plot holes. So that tells me that it's an exceptional book. Uh, hopefully you'll get the chance to read it. It's on Audible. His next book is coming out in September. I've got it pre-ordered. I think it's book six in the collection. Um, really good book, something that you really should read. Number eight. This one I'm probably going to get some discontent with being number eight, but Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy with Douglas Adams. And I'm only doing one book per author because Douglas Adams is one of those authors that nearly every book he wrote should be in a top 10 list. He, he's got the humor, he's got the British humor, the intelligence. The, the, the guy was brilliant. Um, he died so young, it was a horrible blow to literature and to all human beings everywhere. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Salmon of Doubt, Starship Titanic. Everything that he wrote. Uh, if you listen to the audiobooks, the uh, the ones on Audible are read by, I can't remember the gentleman's name. He's really good. But there are a set out there that Douglas Adams himself actually wrote. If you get a chance to listen to those, they are also exceptional. Uh, I've got both sets. Uh, you won't lack for experience either way. But it is kind of neat to have the author actually read his book. Number seven on the list, Ender's Shadow, Orson Scott Card. Now, of course, uh, those of you that know science fiction fantasy, which probably going to be most all of you, know that Ender's Game preceded Ender's Shadow by quite a few years. Ender's Shadow is better if you read Ender's Game first, in my opinion, but Ender's Shadow brings out the main character is Bean and his point of view for the same time period and the same conflict that happened in Ender's Game. And it is just done magnificently. Uh, myself and my sons, we've read it several times. We're always talking about it. 
once in a while I'll call them, come here, Bean, and, and they love it. You know, you want to be Julian Delphique. You want to be Bean. He is a hero. He, he, his character is entertaining. He's intelligent. You want the book to go on. You want another whole series of books uh, at that quality of Ender Shadow. Excellent book. Everyone should read it. Uh, six. Uh, is pretty well the entire John Ringo collection. I chose Hell's Fair. I just probably got done uh, going through the Postling series and the spinoff series Callie's War. Uh, John Ringo, I believe, has over, over 40 books that he's authored or co-authored. Some of them, um, uh, not as good as others, but a couple of the series, you know, and I chose The Postling War uh, is one of the best. He's got the Prince Roger series. Um, what were some of the other ones? The Troy series. They, they capture the imagination. They've got some really fun sci-fi, some really good characters. Uh, Ringo's one of my favorite authors. It's really neat to have living authors. So you can look forward to even more books coming out. Um, I chose Hell's Fair. It's the last book in the Postling War series, mostly because of Bun Bun. <laughs> um, there's a whole story around Bun Bun, the, the characters associated with Bun Bun, what Bun Bun does, that is a side story in the main Posting War series, but it's hilarious, it's clever, it's fun. So that, Bun Bun basically moved Hell's Fair to the book, my favorite book in the genre, all of the John Ringo's works, out of a lot of really good books. Uh, Coban, Stephen W. Bennett, uh, another modern author, still alive, still writing books. The Coban series, and it might be because I'm getting older, it goes into genetic manipulation and what genetics and what science theoretically could do with, with our human bodies as far as uh, helping them to heal, helping them to be stronger. Uh, helping our bodies to be able to regenerate so that we could live longer, live healthier. And then, of course, tied in with that is an alien invasion and how they use it to combat these physically, militarily, vastly superior aliens that are attacking. Excellent book. Excellent stories. Love the characters. Uh, the original book uh, was done by a group of different people, different voices. I think it's the best. The, the preceding books didn't have the same voices, but they were still excellent books, and the storylines are, are something that you would really enjoy. It's one of my favorite books of all time, one of my favorite series of all time. Number four, uh, this one is traditional. It's really hard to do a top fiction, nearly impossible to do a top fantasy series without J.R.R. Tolkien and The Hobbit, by extension, The Lord of the Rings. Um, my understanding is Yara Tolkien took years and years and years to write these books. And they're beloved, The Hobbit's beloved by children, The Lord of the Rings are traditionally beloved by adults. I, when I was young, we would get, I believe it was $2 a week to do our chores. I could never save up that $2. That $2 was spent down at the gas station on Chicka Sticks and Charleston Chews. Uh, pretty well the day that we got it. So I could never save enough money to buy books, except for on my birthday. On my eighth birthday, I got a $20 bill from my grandmother. I went to the bookstore and I bought the Lord of the Rings collection. Let me grab that real quick. These were the first books that I remember buying. I might have bought some golden books or something when I was younger than eight years old, but these are the first ones that I remember buying with the money that I had. Um, as you can tell, the, they're haggard. Stickers on the covers, didn't know how to take care of them back then. They're worn. I, I, I've read Jared Tolkien, The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, I don't know how many times, more than 10 through my life. Uh, they're, they're still magical. They're still a very special series of books. If you're going to read and you're going to read the fantasy or even the fiction genre at all, you really have to have read and hopefully enjoy reading multiple times 
The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Number three in the series. Uh, th these top three bumped down The Hobbit. Hobbit used to be in my top one a few years ago. Number three is another modern author. Thank goodness we have so many living authors putting out some really good quality books. Uh, Ready Player One, Ernest Klein. This book took me back to 1980. The, the, the mall, the arcades, the pizza parlors, the bowling alleys, the, the cult uh, trivia, the cult history. Every part of this book had pieces of my life that it just transported me back to there. It was a fun book to read. I listened to the audiobook with my son. Uh, I'm so excited that both of my sons have bought the book and I've read it multiple times. Uh, hopefully I can get my daughters to read them. Uh, awesome book. Awesome book. If you have any connection or any even passing knowledge or interest in, in video game, uh, electronic technology, past history, Ready Player One is a really fun book, even for the younger generations. Number two, Terry Pratchett. Terry Pratchett's another author which has over more than 40 books. Unfortunately, Terry Pratchett has passed away. He had an aggressive bout of Alzheimer's, if I remember correctly. It, it was just a horrible loss, once again, uh, like Douglas Adams. You know, for us to lose such a talented author, such an imagination, the dry wit, a lot similar to Douglas Adams. He's like the fantasy version of Douglas Adams. Uh, his Discworld series is one of the best series ever written. I chose Thud out of the book, mostly because there's one particular character that has an epiphany in life and a transformation in his life that really hit me hard on somebody that woke up and had an opportunity and the, the, the crossroads, you know, the path not taken, he got to take it. And, and so Thud is a very special book. There's lots of them. The very first book he ever wrote, I believe, was The Carpet People, not one of his more famous books, but even that one. I think he wrote it when he was like 18 or 19, then re-wrote it a few years later. Uh, is a good book. Soul music. I just picture somebody standing on stage and doing a rock concert in a fantasy setting. Awesome. Awesome characters, fun stories. There, you would be really hard pressed to pick up any Terry Pratchett book and not have an enjoyable read. And some of them, pretty much guaranteed. Uh, you read one or two, you'll be hooked. You'll want to read all of his books. Excellent, excellent series. Now, this top book is kind of the reason why I re wanted to redo my top fiction book list for 2018. And I do got to do a shout out to the Thomas Frank channel. He did his top uh, fiction book list. And I believe this was number two on his list. And I'd never heard of it before. It's Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality. Originally, it was under the name Less Wrong. Of course, uh, a writer's name. The uh, name of the gentleman is... I'm going to slaughter this. Eliza Yudkowsky. Uh, he is a artificial intelligence computer programmer, if I understand his backstory correctly. He's written other books about rational thinking, scientific method. You know, how do you how do you you know think through? And this book is basically taking the Harry Potter series and turning Harry Potter's rationality and intelligence up to ten. Not just Harry Potter, but almost all the characters. Before they do anything, you can tell that it's been thought out. What would the most rational sequence of events be for this character to do at this point. And if they're intelligent enough, which most of them are, you know, let's have them do that. This book is amazing. He's had a couple competitions. It was written over a few years. A lot of fans wrote in and helped with the writing of the book, if I understand things correctly. So it's not just uh, Eliza, but, you know, a lot of the fans you know, helped to comment and upgrade and rewrite and improve the quality of this book. It's a fan fiction. 
It can be found on the internet for free. Uh, Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality. There is a bookstore here that you can take books off of the internet and they will print a single print copy. I'm going to do my best to have them uh, make me an actual physical copy of this book. I really want it on my shelf. Uh, Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality, my number one book, my number one pick, favorite book. Uh, I've read through it three times now. And I only learned about it a few months ago. So uh, if you get a chance, check it out. You'll, you'll love it. I got to do a few honorable mentions real quick. We are Legion. We are Bob, Dennis E. Taylor, The bob Averse, Excellent Artificial Intelligence Future Book. The Lamb, The Gospel According to Biff, Christopher Moore. He's, got, he's a comic writer. I, listen to this other title of his other book. The Stupidest Angel, A Heartwarming Tale of Christmas Terror. Just from that title, you have to at least pick up and thumb through the book and read the story. But The Lamb is hilarious. In a South Park, you know, caveat, very adult humor, uh, very potty humor version of uh, a biblical gospel. But if you like South Park and you like that kind of humor, you will love this book. Uh, Animal Farm, George Orwell. I want all of them. Everybody needs to read it just to remember, you know, how society is manipulated and how society doesn't think rationally, doesn't use a scientific method, method doesn't think clearly or intelligently on so many things. They just follow. Animal Farmer, Animal Farm, very important book to read. Mistborn, Brandon Sanderson. Uh, Brandon Sanderson uh, finished the Wheel of Time series for Robert Jordan. He's an excellent author. The Mistborn series was a very good. Love that series. Molten God's Eye, Larry Niven. He also uh, did Ring World. Molten God's Eye is, really takes it to the nth degree. What will happen to the earth when our resources run out and thinks about some of the problems and, you know, how, what or some of the social um, decisions that will have to be made. Uh, really good book, really good story, good characters, great plot. Hyperion, Dan Simmons, loved it. Armor, John Stakely, excellent science fiction book. Snow Crash, Neil Stevenson, he also wrote Diamond Age. Altered Carbon, Richard Morgan. <sighs> that would probably be in my top 10, other than he gets a little too graphic on a few parts. It actually detracted from the book to me and made me stand away. And I am not a prude. You know, I can take a lot of sex, drugs, and rock and roll and violence in my books. I, I enjoy quite a bit of that in my books. I mean, Ringo is known for quite a bit of that. Uh, and Altered Carbon just took a little bit beyond where I, I was comfortable with. But the story outside of that is excellent story. They've got the TV series now. I haven't finished it, but it seems to be following the book really well. Really good book. Uh, the Painted Man, Peter V. Brett, The Demon Cycle. All those books are fun reads. Uh, Sirens of Titan, Kurt Vonnegut, Slaughterhouse-Five. Traditional, you know, books that are, are famous. That they are books that you really should read. Uh, the Dragonlance series. Put that on there just because in my youth they were so special. They don't hold up as well as in a, reading them as an adult, but there's a lot of nostalgia involved. I would say there's still a lot of fun reads in the Dragonlance books. Uh, Pierce Anthony. Pierce Anthony, same thing. Uh, he's got some really fun uh, Incarnations of Immortality series, the Xanth series, some really fun books to read. That's it for my list and my honorable mentions. I do want to leave you with a thought for the day. Have you ever noticed uh, when you eat popcorn that if you put enough butter and salt on it, that it tastes just like butter and salt? <laughs> Jerry Pratchett. Thanks. You guys have a good one.